visiting Molly for the first time after Storm Eunice. Let's uh, see what she looks like. Replacing uh, the rusty bolt that was uh, holding the rudder gudgeon in, look. So I've uh, managed to take that bolt out. Had to send a small boy into the starboard locker to reach back and remove it. As you can see, the head is well and truly corroded. Obviously, something wrong with the grade of steel that was used there originally so um kind of just replace that got a nice new shiny bolt slightly longer from the chandlery um ready to refit that just going to put a bit of uh silicone sealant in the uh, in the hole Piran is uh, climbing in to access the bolt at the other end Ben's got the spanner on the outside. Excellent. Okay, that's all on there. Look at that, lovely immortalised on video. So, like this. Uh, yes. That's it. Nice job. You'll get to the point when you can't tighten it with your fingers anymore because of the the nylock. Then you'll need to use your spanner. Give us a wave. <laughs> well done. Did a great job there. Teamwork, you see.
So uh, here we are on a pretty stormy Sunday in Falmouth with a nice winter project to install a Bluetooth battery monitor, the uh, NASA Marine BM1 Bluetooth uh, onto my uh, Crabber 26 so I can see what the uh, leisure and the starter battery are doing. So here goes. This is the battery locker of my Crabber 26 and uh, you can see it's been very neatly fitted out by Cornish Crabbers. However, there is no monitoring of the batteries of charging or the state of charge, that sort of thing. So I decided to fit a battery monitor. Now, I decided I wanted a Bluetooth battery monitor to avoid the difficulty of feeding the cables through back into the uh, cabin uh, and also because I didn't really want to put a, another display in the cabin and clutter it up there so a Bluetooth monitor looked quite good. Um, I, the difficulty I had with the uh, NASA Bluetooth monitor which I purchased is that the, you needed a shunt uh, it's connected to the negative side of the battery and the, the negative side of my battery is, is quite far from a convenient bulkhead so uh, as you can see uh, all the, the wires are disconnected um, and I've attached a piece of hardwood uh, that I'm going to put the, um, the shunt strap onto to uh, connect back to the battery and then I've decided to put the monitor itself uh, on, the, on the inside of the companionway wall here um, so that that should be within range inside the, the cabin and perhaps um, not quite so much in the electrical interference of these devices here perhaps. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and start fitting some of the parts now. Now I've connected the shunt so the only connection to the negative terminal of my ledger battery is this strap which goes to this shunt here and all of the services are connected onto that one uh, bolt there and then uh, I need to connect the wires that go back to the battery monitor so there'll be, there's one each side of the shunt and then there's one to go to the positive terminal of the ledger battery and also I'm going to um, take a wire from the positive side of the starter battery so that I can monitor that as well. So after a great deal of uh, fiddling, now I've got the uh, cables connected across the shunt and the fused positive connection connected to the positive terminal of the battery and that's led back to the battery monitor which is uh, chirping away happily and I've got this cable here led back via a fuse to the positive terminal of the starter battery. So uh, we've now completed the installation. It looks a bit untidy at the minute and I'll have to uh, tidy things up, strap the batteries down, put the covers back on, but um, it's a pretty successful install. I'll show you the app uh, when I'm back in the cabin. So the hardware installation is now complete and time to connect via Bluetooth. Um, I've downloaded the app. I'm not using the NASA Marine app. I'm using um, an iPhone and the app is paid for, uh, which NASA uh, mention in their in their literature but I've chosen to use a different app also paid for uh, because it had better reviews on uh, the App Store and you can see uh, it's showing me there that um, I've got the, the battery discharging because I've got the, the house lights on and it's giving me an indication of how much longer the battery will last. Uh, let's turn on a few more devices. So uh, I've turned on all the lights now and uh, it's showing that uh, the the current of discharge. Uh, I've also got the app on my iPad but one thing I've discovered is you can only have one uh, device connected at a time which is not unreasonable I guess. 
Um, so I'm pretty happy with my installation. The range seems to be pretty good. Um, I can, if I'm the furthest forward on on the boat in in the four peak, uh, I can still read the uh, battery volts, which means that uh, you know if I need to check on the battery state in the morning when I wake up, I can do that without even getting out of my uh, bed. So uh, that's a success. Uh, if you found this useful, then uh, that's great. And uh, if you've got any comments, uh, leave them.